If you would like to know how to keep your heart as healthy as possible, how to clean out your arteries if they're not clean, or how to keep them clean, you clicked on the right video. Hi, I'm Dr. Corey Stern. Welcome to my show, Take Control of Your Health. I'd like to welcome back a wonderful guest, Dr. Nelson Bulmash. He is a chiropractor, a naturopath, a nutritionist, and he is also the creator of Health Matters, which is a health show uh, widely distributed on TV channels, radio, and social media. And we will put a link to that show in the description so you can check it out. So welcome back, Nelson. Thank you so much for coming back and taking all this time to enlighten us about really important health topics. And today we are going to talk about the heart. And obviously it's an extremely important topic. So many people are concerned about the health of their heart. So many people have issues with their heart. My own dad actually died of a heart attack when he was 47 years old. Mm -hmm. So it's always been a big concern of mine as well. So what, what can you tell us about keeping our heart healthy as possible? Well, one of the things I'm going to do to play it safe, because as I've gotten more well-known, I've gotten more and more censored. So I'm going to do everything I can to speak in a way that keeps you from being under the gun and me from being under the gun, because neither one of us needs to be thrown under the bus and stop from doing what we love and which is so effective. So I'm going to quote the work of Matthias Rath. And he wrote an amazing book. Uh, you know, I'm such a believer that if you're on the lookout constantly, God, source, whatever you want to call it, is always there to give you your next, uh, what shall I say, point of focus to help you go forward. And I was in a store one day, and this book that I'm going to show you momentarily just jumped off the shelf at me. As a matter of fact, it literally fell off the shelf when I walked in front of it. I swear sometimes, whatever you believe, there's something that like make sure that you can't miss what you're supposed to find mm -hmm. and i was in a well-known store here in metropolitan atlanta quite a few years ago and all of a sudden this book literally not figuratively fell off the shelf are you able to see that mm -hmm. that's matthias rath on the back i'll show you a picture of him with linus Pauling. and it's very sad to me that this book isn't in nearly every home this is a must have book for every healthcare professional. And so what I'm going to do is he's been doing his research for probably 20 or 30 years. Matthias Rath and his book here is called Why Animals Don't Get Heart Attacks, But People Do. He, was, he did a landmark lecture at Stanford University some years ago. He still does a tremendous amount of work with regard to heart function. And his institute is Dr. Rath Health Foundation. And the proceeds from the sales of his book all go to that so that he can continue improving the research and the understanding of heart disease. And his basic model is fascinating. The question that we always ask is why do more people die from heart attacks than any other degrees? And his basic premise and mine now that I've done this for 30 years, and I've taken a lot of his work and then I've I've stood on his shoulders and I've developed some of my own work. I have certain things that he doesn't include. And I'll talk about those as well. But one of the things that he suggests is that we have a lot of our heart disease is caused by nutrient deficiencies. And his, his postulation is that if you don't have the right nutrients, who in this country does have all the right nutrients, right? And this is a big deal because there's still so many people Corey, who don't understand that you can't eat the American junk food diet and be replete with all the nutrients you need to be healthy. And it's remarkable to me, uh, you've been in 21 years, I've been in now over 30 years, how many people still remain ignorant. And I have to assume in many cases, it is now by choice. Because there's so many, you know, you got a great show here. I have a great show. We write articles, we do talks, we get out to our patients and anyone who will listen to us. And unfortunately, and I'm not here to speak or wax conspiratorially against the Western medical model. I know we need lots of different people 
to step forth to help us in whatever way they do. And I'll be the first one to tell you that if I get in a bad car accident, I want the best of what Western medicine offers us. Caveat here. However, one of the areas that Western medicine does not do well in is chronic degenerative diseases. And we have chronic degenerative diseases because we have a problem of insufficiency of nutrients. And Matthias Rath speaks at length about how lack of specific nutrients cause specific heart problems. And that's what we're gonna have the focus of this discussion on. Great. However, we also live in a very toxic world. So in addition to having a diet that's replete in all the nutrients necessary to be, he to, to be healthy, we must also have an array of supplements, if you will, that are productive. Because I would suggest now there are millions of cancer-causing agents that we breathe in or that we're exposed to in the foods that we eat that are never even checked for. Many years ago, the EPA, and this has got to be 15 or 20 years ago, Corey suggested that there were 80,000 carcinogenic elements in the air that we breathe. Now, once again, this could be 20 years ago. It's easily 15 years ago that they made this, this announcement. So my point is, it's not enough anymore that you eat healthily. You have to say to yourself, I'm going to eat really well, Corey, but what am I going to do in addition to that to make sure that I'm detoxifying my body so that not only do I get enough nutrients, but I expel the poisons that I'm getting in through respiration, through contact, through eating. Sadly, we're finding even a lot of the organic food is juxtaposed non-organic farming lands. And so it gets up with pesticides and so forth. So the idea here is that there are very specific nutrient issues that result in plaque formation in the heart. So Corey, the question is, why is that? Well, in the many years, decades, if you will, that Matthias Rath did his research, he found that as an example, when you don't have specific nutrients, you get a fragility of the coronary arteries, the cerebral arteries, the carotid arteries, and likely many, many more. And so the reason he titled his book, Why Animals Don't Get Heart Attacks, is because, and you probably know this, there is a nutrient that all other mammals that I'm aware of seem to produce in their bodies and humans do not. And of course, the answer to that riddle is vitamin C. Corey, when you don't get enough vitamin C, you end up eventually with this fragility, a cracking, if you will, of the lining of the arteries. Now, you and I believe that there is an innate wisdom that does everything it can to coordinate, sustain, animate us in life, in time and space so that we're always living the best that we can. Now, now if the world is full of toxins, I had a lecture recently where we talked about uric acid and how vitamin C actually lowers your uric acid and how critical that is in stabbing off heart attacks, strokes, cancer, liver disease, high blood pressure, obesity, chronic degenerative diseases, and so forth. And so vitamin C is, is very, very important at lowering through its antioxidant abilities, the free radical known as uric acid. Well, when we don't have enough vitamin C, and I'm going to talk about it in complex, Corey, you and I know this, but many of our listeners don't, that vitamin C complex incorporates not only ascorbic acid, which is the antioxidant or one of the antioxidant portions of the C-complex, but bioflavonoids and enzymes and other components that are critical to being able to use it effectively in all of its splendor. So with regard to our, our physiology, when you don't get enough vitamin C, you get this cracking of the coronary artery. So the internal wisdom, the innate wisdom, as we like to call it, Corey, uses cholesterol as a form of stackling to protect the inner lining so that as the cracks get bigger, they don't rupture, allowing us to go into a death spiral immediately and die within seconds to minutes. So it says, hey, body, you're really smart. What can we do to stop this artery from cleaving open? And the answer is you take something called cholesterol and you pack the arteries that are vulnerable because they're weakening because they are not replete with the nutrients they need. 
to make sure that they're strong because they're under a lot of pressure. In most cases, people are stressed. People tend to have higher blood pressure now, more so than they ever have. I heard it said that one out of every three adults now has high blood pressure. Now they know that, Corey, the blood pressure that we thought was acceptable, which we consider borderline high blood pressure, isn't in any way acceptable. That it's already causing damage long before it's considered high. And so my son, who's an internist, said, Dad, it's really important that you keep your blood pressure as close to 120 or less over approximately 70. He said, we find surprising damage the further you go from those systolic and diastolic values. So even at 135, you're already suffering from damage. You're putting a premature stress on the arteries, causing them to what? To eventually crack and become weakened and damaged. And so the higher the blood pressure, the greater the likelihood that the body has to pull from its arsenal and develop compounds like spackling in the form of cholesterol to strengthen these weakened arteries. And so what he found is that if you give the body vitamin C, if you give the body vitamin E, vitamin C is critical for making collagen. Collagen. Collagen is important for strengthening the arteries. Vitamin E in its natural form, not just an isolated component. Often people get vitamin C as an antioxidant only. And, you know, there are at least eight different forms of that alone. And most vitamin companies will choose one. Once again, whole food vitamin E from wheat germ, as an example, is a much better pick. In most cases, there are some exceptions. Like if you're in really bad shape, you may need vitamin E <coughs> as an as an antioxidant for its antioxidant specific forms of protection. What would be a case of that? Let's link it to the last lecture, uric acid. So as uric acid damages tremendously free radical damage that insults the endothelial layer of the blood vessel, the internal layer of the blood vessel, sometimes we need extra vitamin C. And I, once again, I talked about in our last meeting, how I love the liposomals because they give eight to 12 hour protection. So sometimes we have to make a hard choice. We have to do what's called green medicine. Green medicine is where we use nutrients that have very, very safe outcomes rather than drugs. And I'd rather use green medicine than use drugs if you don't have to. So the liposomal C gives us protection every time we take it for eight to 12 hours. It's gonna reduce, for example, the high uric acid and other free radicals that could be damaging that inner lining of our coronary arteries so that we can get that under control as we get their lifestyle under control, getting them sleeping better, controlling stress better, eating better, supplementing better, exercising better. So sometimes you gotta make hard choices and we gotta get a blend of green medicine and whole food supplementation uh, that we could call functionally related or, or functionally uh, we use as the basis for taking care of our people. Does that make sense? Absolutely, Perfect. yeah. So. So another thing that he found was that many people don't have effective digestion or they don't get the right proteins. And so they're low in lysine and proline, which are two amino acids that are critical for the formation of collagen and therefore re-strengthening these weakened arterial linings. So in some cases, I recommend that people take 1,500 to 3,000 milligrams of these a day initially on an empty stomach so that these amino acids aren't competing with other amino acids. I want them to go in and have an immediate effect at giving the body what it needs to go into overdrive in correcting these deficits with uh, collagen formation so that we're putting together a picture of extra vitamin C. And we, once again, we always include whole food vitamin C. We always include whole vitamin E complex. And sometimes there's a place for green medicine so that we can get the body caught up so the person doesn't die of a heart attack, of a stroke, right? An aneurysm. Shocking the amount of people that report to me, yeah, my doctor found I have an aneurysm. And, you know, people are under so much stress. People are under so much stress emotionally, physically, dietarily, free radical damage. So, we want to always look at, at these wonderful people who come in to see us and find ways that we can help them immediately, immediately.
immediately and then get them caught up so that over time we can change their lifestyle and get them basically living off of a whole food diet and whole food supplementation. Any questions about that so far? No, but um, I also am a big fan of feeding people good quality collagen. Um, and if they have digestive issues, they need to take some pepsin with it. Pepsin helps to digest collagen. And so um, I use the product from Standard Process called Okra Pepsin. The okra slime in there is very healing to the lining of the gut and the pepsin will help them digest the collagen. So they'll get better absorption. I think I'm gonna end up at some point doing a whole video just on collagen because I'm turning into a collagen expert and I have found that many collagen products are contaminated with glyphosate, yes. right? which is yeah. what, which yes. is what um, Roundup is. And I am finding all of, the, all of the products that don't have glyphosate in them that are glyphosate free. So I'll, I'll do a video just on that. Um, but I'm finding that um, people really need collagen for strong arteries and, and vessels and, uh, you know, and, and heart support and muscle right. support and, and hair, skin and nails, which of course yes. it's important it's, to look good too. Yes, it is. Of <laughs> course. And when you're healthy, generally you look good because you have the nutrients you need to look good. And your point is, is very, very well taken, Corey in that if you're not getting the nutrients you need, whether it be the amino acids, which are the building blocks of proteins or nutrients like vitamin C or amino acids like proline, lysine or antioxidant protection, sometimes people are in such a deficit, they have such massive free radical damage. I'll put them on something like pycnogenol, which is a very, very interesting antioxidant because it helps in that it has the ability to reduce or give an electron to molecules like vitamin C, recharging them so that they again can go further and protect them from uric acid or other free radicals that are damaging the endothelial lining of the coronary arteries or any arteries in the human body. There's also standard process has a product called ePoise, which is also an electron donor. Um, there might be pycnogenol in there, I'm not sure, but yeah, that's- Very, that's a, very, very good point. Very yeah. good. Mm -hmm. Now, I want to add something and I need to be very cautious about this. Um, I have not done my own research. There is no money in this because drugs like Lipitor are making billions upon billions of dollars. So nobody's going to do something that would decrease the use of Lipitor, which by the way is covered by the government. So if you see nearly any cardiologist, one of the first things they're going to do is put you on Lipitor and they mean well, they mean well. And they've shown that Lipitor does some interesting things. One of which is, of course, it lowers some of the dangerous cholesterol levels. Secondly, it actually helps decrease the acceleration of placking. And I get that they mean well. Once again, I'm not here to disparage any of my colleagues. We all have a role. My father's life was saved because he didn't do all these things in advance because he didn't know to some you know, 20 years ago. They just didn't have all this out in a way that, that uh, would help him so that he would end up out of the hospital. And unfortunately, he did the worst things. He had severe diabetes, which is a carbohydrate metabolism disorder. And what he did that broke my heart because I realized it wasn't the correct thing to do was his doctors all told him to have a carbohydrate-based diet, low protein, low fat. So he ate very little protein and very little fat. You don't give somebody who's a diabetic a, a diet high in sugars and, and even complex carbs. They have a serious problem, right? Handling carbohydrates. You can focus on a carnivore diet. You can focus on a keto diet. You can focus more on a paleo diet. But I find these work dramatically better, Corey, than keeping them on a high sugar or high even complex carbohydrate diet. Now, I've done it with people who insist by giving them lipoic acid, by giving them glucose tolerance factor and giving them digestive aids and so on and so forth. I've gotten them to stabilize, but we keep them off of simple sugars. We put them on high quality proteins, high quality fats and complex carbs. Different uh, case, a different uh, topic. We'll go on to that for another lecture. But the point I want to make here is that heart disease is one of the most, if not the most misunderstood disease 
complex in the world because everybody likes to talk endlessly about cholesterol. I'm not suggesting that there aren't cholesterol molecules that are dangerous. I'm not suggesting that. I'm not suggesting that if you're not intelligent about the way you eat and supplement, that you can't still have problems. I've known people who supplemented well and ate well, and they still had a, a level of difficulty with placking. Now, one of the things that I have done in the years to come, or in the, excuse me, the years of, of past, and I still do this, is, and Matthias Rath didn't do this, but there are enzyme complexes. And I want to speak now and defer to the legend who taught me this, who no longer, very sadly, he died just over a year ago. He was an absolute legend. He's one of the greatest giants in functional medicine. His name was Dr. Stephen Holtewanger, a very, very dear friend of mine. You want to see some amazing lectures. You want to learn like an unprecedented, go and follow him. He was a guest multiple times on my show. He was one of my very uh, best friends and he was a legend. He had an understanding of functional medicine unknown to most of us. He was absolutely brilliant beyond knowing. And he could tell you uh, one of the things that he was, he became worldwide uh, known, uh, known worldwide for was he got more people out of mental institutions than anyone in history. And one of the things he did was he realized that different forms of B vitamins, B1, niacin, B6, folic acid, and B12 were tremendously missing. And when those were low, particularly in combination, people ended up having mood instability that led to them often being institutionalized. He took a lot of people, or he got a lot of people out of mental institutions. There's a book out now called Power Nutrients that is also exceptional at delving into this separate topic, but I want people to know that's an amazing reference source. Power Nutrients. Walsh, I think, is the author's last name. So as I was getting ready to say, you can take certain enzyme complexes. I visited my dear friend, Dr. Stephen Holtenwanger, who is an MD psychiatrist by training. And he said, Nelson, come in here. I want you to see this. And Steve was interesting. He was very humble, uh, a real, real funny man. He loved to laugh and play. And he asked this nurse who was sitting in the patient's chair, and he said, would you mind if Dr. Nelson Blumish sat in and watched me work with you? And she said, no, no, of course not. She was very weak, talked with a soft voice, very little strength for interacting. And she apologized to me and said, I'm, doctor, I'm, I'm terribly sorry. I'm, I'm very, very ill. and I, I don't have a lot of energy. And I said, please don't even waste your energy on explaining to me. As long as you're comfortable, I'm delighted to be here and learn because Dr. Holtenwanger to me is one of the greatest legends in functional medicine. And what he teaches me, I will share with the world. This is such a moment, Corey. So he took a blood sample of hers and he put it under a dark field microscope. And he said, Nelson, what do you see? And as I gazed through the lens, I was trained by my father, who was another extraordinarily brilliant gentleman with a microscope. His name was Dr. Jerome Bullmash. He was my father and a legend in microbiology. And I grew up as a little boy looking through the lens of a microscope. So I knew well what blood looked like under a microscope. He used to, I used to come in and visit him and he'd say, look at this blood sample and tell me what you see. Steve did the same thing. He said, Nelson, sit down, look through this, tell me what you see. And I said, trying to be very kind, knowing that the woman was sitting next to me whose blood we were looking at. And so he sort of nodded to me, like, be careful what you say. I said, well, one of the things I see, Dr. Holtenwanger, is this person has a lot of what we call rulo formations. The word rulo means coin stacking. And he said, and what do you think that's going to do to her? And I said, sir, if you have rulo formation, meaning coin stacking, it means a number of things. It means the cells have lost their polarity. And as such, they're going to tend to aggregate. If they aggravate, they're not going to allow for the dispersion of oxygen through the vascular system to give oxygen to the cells so that they can take the oxygen in and use it for the formation of cellular energy known as ATP. And he said, excellent. Excellent. So I said, we have a number of problems here. We have a structural problem in that she's going to have micro clotting throughout her entire body, particularly in the capillary beds, because these rouleau formations were, you know, at the coin stack in these red blood cells were some of them were over 20 high. And he said, there's just no way that's going to effectively go through the capillaries. And he said, you're absolutely correct. 
I said, so she's going to be having not only low oxygen dispersion, she's going to be having clots that are going to make it difficult for her to oxygenate and to function. If this is happening in her brain, she's having serious problems. And she said, oh, I am. I'm starting to have trouble talking. And this, Corey, is something that I figured out in COVID. Many of the people that were very ill that I saw lost the ability to talk. And I realized this is a cardiovascular disease. And one of the things that's happening is these people are getting microclotting that is stopping them from being able to oxygenate the brain effectively. So I'm a person who pays very, very great attention to interacting with people, listening to people and observing. So I went back in my mind to this lecture that Steve gave me some 25 or 30 years before. And the story gets even better, Corey, because I said to him, there's more to this story. He said, what do you mean, Nelson? I said, there are some white fragments that I cannot make out deep in the field of your dark field microscope. And he said, excellent. Shall we increase the magnification? I said, we should indeed. So he increased it. I said, well, there's more clarity, Steve, but there's something I'm missing. It's not magnified quite enough for me to make an educated guess as to what it is. Would you mind if I increase the magnification to full strength? And he smiled at me and said, not at all perceived. So I increased the magnification of his specimen, his blood sample under this, underneath the uh, lens. And I came up and I looked at him and I started to laugh. I said, wow, unbelievable. And he said, really, tell me what you see. And I said, what I see is very clear the sleeves from cholesterol plaques have been removed from the capillaries. And he said, excellent, excellent Nelson. Very, very astute. And I looked at him and I said, did you by chance give her enzyme complexes? And he laughed and he said, I did in fact give her enzymes. A matter of fact, only two. And he says, he smiled at me and he said, Excellent work, Nelson. Now let's wait and see what happens when I give her more. He said, ma'am, would you mind stepping out, taking two more, and then I will bring you back here so that Nelson and I, Dr. Nelson Bulmesh and I can reevaluate your blood. This woman came in, smiling at us, had color in her skin, sat down, talkative and said, I don't understand what's happening. And he said, what do you mean? She said, I have so much more energy. I can put sentences together. I, I feel like I, I could walk in here without being out of breath. And he said, excellent. Would you mind if I pricked your finger and took a blood sample again? And I said, uh, and she said, not at all, doctor, not at all. Now, same procedure, Corey. We took her blood sample, put it under a dark field microscope, and looked at it under the low power. Any guess what we saw? Probably less uh, coin stacking and more uh, sleeves, uh, cholesterol sleeves. Excellent. You're very, very astute and you're absolutely correct. She had almost no rural formation of the red blood cells, as you called it, coin stacking of red blood cells. They were almost completely gone which meant that there was a significant increase in her ability to pass these red blood cells rich in oxygen to all the cells so she could make more cellular energy. She said, I just can't believe how much better I feel. I feel like a different person. Then Steve said, why don't you just jump ahead in the story, Nelson, and go to the highest magnification. And I did. And he said, what do you notice now? And I said, the field is loaded with these sleeves that were cleaved off by the enzymes. He said, do you know what I call that, Nelson? I said, no, Steve, I've never seen this before. He said, I call it the starry night effect. So when you looked under low power, Corey, it was like these were stars twinkling at night. You could see because they were transparent, they were white, and they were only, uh, I don't know how thick they were, but they were so thin, you could see completely through both sides of the sleeve. And they were clearly little cleaved off arms 
taken from places like the benzene capillaries, where the enzyme had more time to work, ensuring that these red blood cells went through the turns in the capillary beds much more effectively. And so what Steve was known for, for improving cardiac function, brain function, energy production, immune function, reducing chronic pain, was to make sure the blood was circulating effectively. So one of the best things you can do for these heart patients is make sure they're on enzyme complexes so that you're not getting the coin stacking resulting in the blockage of the capillary beds by the coin stacking and other um, constituents, we'll call them in blood. I mean, they, she had all kinds of increased bacterial counts in her blood, you, you name it. And it was remarkable to me, and I've never forgotten this, over two, way over two decades later, what a transformation two to four digestive enzymes. That's all they were, were digestive enzymes. Now, what I have found to be very helpful, particularly with people who have these, these micro clotting issues, whether it be through COVID, heart attacks, strokes, is we give seropeptidase and natokinase. Now you have to be careful, natokinase is a mild blood thinner. So you have to be careful if somebody's on a blood thinner that you don't make the blood too thin. If somebody starts, hemorrhaging, you start seeing lots of bruising in their arms and legs and so forth, then their blood is too thin. Seropeptidase is a blood cleaner. So we now use protease enzymes, Wobenzyme is a great one, or protease plus by ProSol, another fabulous complex. And we combine them with natokinase and seropeptidase. And it is absolutely remarkable. I had one patient who contacted me with COVID, she had so many microclots in her brain, she couldn't talk. She couldn't put sentences together. Within an hour, she began talking to me. Within four hours, she sounded nearly normal. In 24 hours, she could speak completely normally again. Now here's what's heartbreaking. How many people are there out in the world right now that don't have this information? And what will the governing bodies do, the medical board, if you start talking about this, even the chiropractic board said to me, Nelson, you better be very careful what you say. That's why I'm reporting on the work of other people primarily. And uh, this works for many people, not making any promises. So anybody listening to this, I'm not saying it'll get rid of your problems. I'm not saying you should use it to treat yourself. I'm saying that you should find a responsible functional med medical doctor, whether it's a chiropractor, Chinese medical doctor, uh, naturopath, nutritionist, MD, DO, who specializes or who knows something about this and speak to them to see if it would be valuable for helping you. Yes, I actually use those things also. And I have many stories just like that of people who are very symptomatic, who were you know, either having zero energy after they were symptomatic from what appeared to be or what what we're calling uh, this this conglomerate conglomerate of symptoms, COVID. Um, yes. And the the natokinase uh, works very quickly. I myself was very symptomatic a few months ago, and I was having severe brain fog to the point that I had to write down everything that I needed to do because I couldn't remember yes. anything from one yes. second to the next. As soon, I mean, within couple of minutes of taking the natto kinase, it was like the lights came on. And so I've been taking it ever since. And I have uh, put many, many people on it. Um, so if, yeah, so I have, uh, I use the Allegheny brand um, called Natto LP. If, um, if people uh, feel like they need it or are interested, I'll, I'll put a um, information about it on the description of this video. But I agree with you, Nelson, the best thing to do would be to uh, have a consult with somebody like us. Um, right. So I do virtual consults, but I can also, if you're in the US, I can also find you a practitioner in your area that you could see live if that's what you prefer. And you know, my email, my email is, is going to be in the description of the video. Um, so you can always reach out to me. So I want to, I want to talk about some of my favorite heart support products. Um, and Please. just before, just before I do that, I want to give a shout out to my uh, partner in truth, 
Hats, which is Hardcore Awakened Truth Seekers move and Truth Seekers. And this movement was inspired into creation in this hyper political division in the past few years to get away from polarization and bring people together across the political spectrum to the truth and a sense of community that allows us to move forward. And this movement is making real strides in achieving this vision. They have a very, very large Telegram channel. If you're on Telegram, I'll put the link to their channel uh, in the description of the video. They also have a blog called hatstroop.substack.com where there's contributing uh, writers and I am now one of those. So I'm putting articles on there and they have a website selling merchandise such as my favorite hats hoodie. I love it, love, love it. Love, love this color. And um, they have other cool merchandise too. My hats mug. You are fully, fully. <laughs> I'm hatted. Yeah. I am hatted. Yes. All right. Yeah. So check them out. They're um, a wonderful uh, resource for truth. And all their links will be in the description of this video. So obviously, I have a lot of patients coming in with heart issues. And um, one of the things I have found that when people have been very symptomatic with this um, thing that's called COVID, uh, a lot of times I'm finding that they need heart support. Mm -hmm. um, this is especially true if, they, if they're reporting low energy, which is a pretty common, uh, I find. So here's what's worked for me so far. Definitely what yes, we just talked about. It's one of the primary symptoms of, of any kind of insufficiency. Right, yeah. right. Um, one of the things that, that uh, we just talked about, the, the, the enzymes and the NATO, yes, absolutely, 100% um, effective. I also use a, a product called Cataplex E2. So it's a form of vitamin E that is an oxygen carrier. Right. And I love E2. It's one of my favorite products of all time. And it really... You, I use it when I'm feeling fatigued, um, instead of drinking caffeine, uh, especially if it's in the evening, I can't tolerate caffeine in the evening, but the E2 will give me a burst of oxygen and energy without overstimulating me. And it's also excellent for athletes. Yes, it is. It, it increases, really increases your endurance. Yeah. Yes, yes. And it delivers oxygen to your muscle tissue. So it allows you to work out um, harder. Um, I also love from Standard Process, Cardio Plus. Cardio Fantastic Plus is product. like a, a multivitamin for the heart. And then we use for the vitamin C, we, we talked about this, um, the whole food vitamin C, Cataplex C. Yes. And um, I also find that most people are deficient in omega-3 fatty acids, which Great call. Great are call. also really good for the heart. So from standard process, I like, uh, it's called tuna omega-3. Um, that's one of, the, one of my favorite omega-3 products. So all of those um, products are available uh, in, the, in the description of this video. You can just click yep. on- Cod liver oil is another fantastic yes. one. Rich yes. in vitamin A, vitamin D. And yes. uh, that's very, very important because vitamin D is critical for helping to make sure calcium metabolism is correct. Right. And yes. uh, another thing that's very important is to make sure ideally that your vitamin D has vitamin K. Vitamin D helps with the absorption of vitamin D3. Vitamin K is the sergeant that says, no, 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 no. We're not having you go in the coronary cerebral or carotid arteries. You're going into the bone. You're going into the muscle. Right. Uh, right. Yeah. It's the traffic director. So traffic so director. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes, good point. And uh, I love cod liver oil. Uh, mm -hmm. Standard process does have a good quality cod liver oil. And um, I was actually thinking this morning about maybe doing a video just on cod liver oil. I'm not sure why that came into my mind, but it just it resonated with me. And Well, you're on target. Yeah. My, my father said when he was a little boy, he never left the house to go to school without his mother giving him a tablespoonful of cod liver oil. That's she right. told him this will cure all your ails. Yeah. Yeah, all the fat soluble vitamins. And, um, you know, most people are pretty deficient. Uh, they're not 
Yes. And not eating foods that are rich in these fat soluble vitamins and not eating the right kinds of fats. Yeah, um, even my, even the, uh, my friend who's a cardiologist, when he speaks to patients, I've, I've heard him say it twice now, make sure you're getting uh, fatty acids from sockeye salmon or other sources of salmon because they're very rich in fats that are healthy at, at both feeding the heart and decreasing the inflammatory cascade that is so rampant in anybody who has heart problems. You know, I'm glad you mentioned that because I have a crazy story. I don't know if I ever shared it on this, on this channel before, but I had a patient who worked for a cardiologist for 20 years and the mm -hmm. cardiologist would constantly tell her, don't eat fat. Fat is bad for you. Now, yes. you know, in the 1980s, fat was really vilified. It was taken out of foods. Everything was fat free and they added tons of sugar to make up for the loss of taste. Yes. So, you know, people were getting very sick. So she was working for this cardiologist who kept telling her, don't eat fat, don't eat fat, don't eat fat. And she took it very literally and did not eat any fat. And as a result, she ended up with such a severe case of dry eye that she went blind. Now your eyeballs need also need omega-3 fatty acids among other fats. So she literally went blind, except that um, medical doctors couldn't figure out why she went blind. And um, one of the treatments that they tried, which to this day baffles me, is they injected around her eyes with Botox. Now, I don't know what they were trying to achieve with that, but it was Botox gone bad. She ended up getting facial paralysis and mm. she literally had lockjaw, so she could not open her mouth. She could not talk. She could not eat. So she was on a pureed diet through a straw and she's blind. And uh, they end up putting her on the solution for everything that they can't figure out. Um, and I know, I know you're trying to be careful not to um, be, uh, uh, let's say, derogatory. But I, you know, and th this is one of those cases where it's just like, what? are you kidding me? So they put her on antidepressants because um, they they didn't know what else to do with her. Well, well, who wouldn't have massive depression if they had lockjaw and, and were now blind? Right. Well, and that didn't end up helping her. In fact, she developed a condition that sometimes happens with psych psychiatric medications called tardive dyskinesia, yeah. where she had uncontrollable movement. So her brother brings her into my office. She's blind. She can't speak. And she's, you know, moving uncontrollably. uncontrollably. And, um, you know, I thought I didn't, you know, immediately... Uh, know what was going on right I thought she, maybe she had special needs I, I didn't know what was happening and then the brother told me the whole story so anyway long story short she stopped the um the antidepressant and the tardive dyskinesia luckily it went away that doesn't always happen sometimes it persists for a while and then I got I started feeding her fats um, both in the form of supplements as well as getting good quality fat into her pureed food and her vision came back within sure. three weeks. Her, her, her sight was restored. What a great uh, the, story. The Botox took a lot longer to wear off. Um, but yeah, finally did. But it's a great story. But it's like, wow, did that really happen? It's Corey, uh, if, yeah. if I may ask you so that I may learn as well, did you happen to give her cod liver oil? Yeah, that was one of the fats we... Well, loaded that's, her up with yeah well that's quite interesting because yeah. one of the number one reasons you get dry eye is low vitamin a and of course right. what do we know about cod liver oil it's very rich in vitamin a and vitamin d right right yes and yeah sometimes fantastic. sometimes we don't know which which of the things we're giving the patient had, was the the one that solved the issue and a lot of times it's it's uh, more than one item because Component, you can't, sure. you, yeah, you can't ab absorb vitamin A very well without fat because it's fat soluble. So yes. And yes, I've had that experience too with eyes where I, I actually gave an older woman, uh, a diabetic woman, uh, zinc because she, for her pancreas, the pancreas needs uh, zinc to produce insulin. And we, we put her on zinc and then lo and behold, her, um, her um, macular degeneration, which is um, a, a 
condition, a degenerative condition that can happen with the el with some elderly people where she actually had stripes in her vision that went away when I gave her the zinc for her pancreas. And she didn't even tell me that she had macular degeneration. She didn't think to tell me that she came well, for help with her, with her diabetes. So it's, it's yeah. always interesting, Corey, because usually you find out, you know, five, 10, 15, 20 different things that cleared up that people have had had so long, they didn't even know it was a problem anymore. Right. Or it was related anymore. Right. Well, in this case, she had had injections of steroids into her eyeballs. She had six injections Ooh. and they were very painful and they didn't help her at all. So she just gave up and said, all right, I'm going to have to live with this. And I guess she didn't even think about it anymore. Yeah. Well, Corey, one of the greatest ironies in health to me is that people who specialize in the heart, cardiologists, often tell people low to a very low fat diet yep. when what is the chief energy source that the heart likes to burn mm -hmm. fats right and so another nutrient that i often use is carnitine l-carnitine because mm -hmm. l-carnitine is used to make the carnitine shuttle that shuttle back into the heart for burning for energy and what do we know that that fats have twice the energy liberated that protein and carbs do Mm -hmm. So the heart loves to burn fat. But in addition to that, it has critical factors like vitamin A, like vitamin D and uh, other constituents that, that do all kinds of amazing things to decrease inflammation and help lubricating anything from the bowels to the blood vessels so that blood, in the case of the heart, flows better, lubricated better, you get less resistance, lowers blood pressure. And just a, a whole myriad cascade of things that are incredibly effective for making the body work better. And you see these things by the dozens as you get better and better at doing your functional analysis and then giving people the supplements that help reverse these issues. I have uh, quite a few videos on the topic of fat, the difference between, so there is a difference between good and bad fat, and um, it's not always what people think it is. So I have a video about fat. I have a video about cooking oil because, you know, so the right. most commercial cooking oils are very inflammatory. So, um, and the other thing I was going to say is that there is a difference between fat and cholesterol. They're not the same thing. A lot of people mix them up and don't realize that. I do have a video about cholesterol too, because you mentioned earlier that there are some um, components of cholesterol that are very bad, and that's true. So there are some components of cholesterol that are really good for you. Yes. Um, your hormones are made out of cholesterol. Your brain needs cholesterol to function 60%, I think, of the cholesterol in your body is in your brain. So that's a um, huge number. Yeah. And critical for, as you mentioned uh, so perfectly, it's used in the lipids that make up your cell membrane. It's a precursor to many of the hormones that you make. And uh, without it, you're in trouble. And so you lower people's cholesterol and you often really, really decrease. Their quality of life. Men go into this function often, feel of aches and pains, brain function deteriorates substantially in, in a fair number of people. Yep. That is right. Yeah. So I have a memory video that I talk about that, the need for good, good cholesterol. And there is a test, there's a blood test available to look at the quality of your cholesterol. Um, depending on the lab that you use, it can be called the cardiac IQ test. It can be called the NMR. And what I have found, I have a, um, a, a patient who's a medical doctor and I always, and I send her a lot of patients because she understands the importance of nutrition and health. Yes. And uh, I always ask her if she could run that test instead of just the general total yes. cholesterol. Yes. And, of course. and she said that most insurances won't pay for it and that, she, you know, people don't want to pay out of pocket, but if you think you have a, an is, issue with your cholesterol or you're, or you're um, struggling with, with heart issues, you really should get that test and take a look at the quality and then, you know, make some corrections in your diet and with yes. supplements and then, yes. and then get retested to see the change, even if you have to pay for that test out of pocket. Or the other yeah. option is just eat a good quality, healthy diet and take 
the supplements that we're talking about. Corey, if I may, I want to talk to you about an interesting story that I had recently that you'll find quite fascinating. And by the way, my favorite comprehensive cardiac panel is the Boston Diagnostic Heart Panel. I think it is the most comprehensive heart panel I've ever seen. And uh, interestingly, I ordered it, or my physician, uh, who's absolutely extraordinary, her name is Dr. Suzanne Frey Turner. She's my doctor here. She's a doctor's doctor, and she lectures all over the country, particularly on peptides. She ran that on me a few weeks ago. This week, I'll have the results of that. And it has certain markers, high sensitivity C-reactive protein, critical marker to determine mm -hmm. the inflammatory state of your heart, homocysteine critical, highly related to B12 folate B6 status. Mm -hmm. Another marker, if these are high, you better get in to see someone because it's foretelling that you are headed to have a heart attack, right? So it's just so interesting to me that so many cardiologists know so little about nutrition. I speak to them and I just sit there humbly and politely. And I sometimes say to them, there might be value in you beginning to explore how nutrition impacts cardiac function and the cardiac state. And well, I've looked into that. I don't see that there's a big connection. You don't see that there's a big or significant connection. Then my friend, you are digging cup deep in a sandy beach, not to the core of the earth because I'm not suggesting there are certain genetic issues that are very, 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 very difficult to deal with uh, without medical aid. But the majority, in my humble opinion, of the heart issues that I have seen have responded mostly quite well with nutritional intervention. Maybe one of the exceptions is Dr. Stephen Gundry. Um, Yes. who is a cardiologist who actually does understand the role of nutrition um, in heart health. And uh, I, I follow his work. I, I would love to get him on as a guest. Um, well, he's, it's interesting because he had done more heart transplants in children than anybody else in the world. He was considered one of the most highly regarded uh, heart transplant specialists in the world. And what is he doing now? All of his focus is on nutrition. So think about what I just said. He was considered one of the most brilliant heart transplant specialists in the world. He gave it up so he could do nutritional research. Quick case I want to share with you. You'll find this fascinating. So I had somebody very near and dear to me who had a coronary calcium CT scan, huge fan. So for those of you who don't know what that is, that's where they do a CAT scan of your coronary arteries. Very, very important. Ideally, if you can, you want to take some things to protect you because it's equivalent to getting 12 chest x-rays. I got it. So you could do things like liposomal curcumin glutathione and vitamin C to protect you to some extent. And iodine. Um, iodine. And iodine is very and good. Ginkgo. Ginkgo. That's, I was just, you, you stole it right from my mouth. I was just going to say that. Absolutely, Corey. <laughs> Thank you for that. That's, that's wonderful. And I've had two patients lately. I feel great now, so why, why would I need to go in and check anything? I, I feel fantastic. I said, listen to me, please. Here's the thing about certain games. Certain games have an eventuality. They have a consequence that is not bad, like you lost Monopoly, it's dire. You have a blowout of, of your Widowmaker artery, the left coronary artery, and you will likely die. I said, listen to me. I don't recommend an enormous number of diagnostic tests, but there's a time and place. You're in an age. Both of them were in their mid to, actually one was in his 70s, the other was in the mid 60s. I said, have it done. If nothing else, I'll give you peace of mind. It'll demonstrate how much or how little plaque you have. Yeah, I was very blessed. My father had almost 100% occlusion of every coronary artery. Uh, this is where it woke me up to dealing with this work. This is this was what got me started some 20 plus years ago. He's been dead now for 15 years, July 8th, and this set me on fire to find a way through this. An interesting story for another day. So this one patient had was in the 87th worst percentile, Corey, for plaque. Wow. Mind you, 
not a single symptom worked out like a beast in the gym. Beast, not Corey, a single symptom of heart issues, not fatigue, not tired. By the way, those are two of the biggest issues, the pre-symptoms of heart problems, low energy, fatigue, falling asleep frequently can often be related to heart problems. Could be other things. I've had uh, spouses, uh, friends lose their spouses this year. They say, I can't ever sleep because of stress. But when you don't have an issue like that and you're constantly falling asleep or you're constantly have no energy, you better look at heart function. It's a big one. Even the cardiologist we saw said, you have low energy, you're falling asleep constantly, you feel like you're always in a state of fatigue, you better look at heart function. So this person said to me, I know you can help me. Please help me. Do whatever you can. I used a lot of the work of Matthias Rath and then added my own, like these the supplement issues. In three or four months, this person went back and had a, a stress echo test. So they could see fasting state after eating, exercise state, what and how well the heart was functioning. After doing this, cardiologist sort of dropped his head and went, hmm, I don't get it. You were in the 87th worst percentile for placking. And I don't see any evidence of placking in your arteries. Wow. And I saw, I saw the results of these tests. I can look at how open the arteries are and they were magnificent. They resemble when they're clear of donuts. They have like a brownish, orangish color. And if there's plaque, it's like they have rat bites out of them where the plaque is occluding the flow of blood. They were perfect in as little as four months. Now, uh, this person was on a very, very heavy protocol. Once again, everybody, no hate mail. Don't tell me, you know, you're, you're, I'm going to be, you want to be treated. All I'm saying is I put the, this person on that protocol. That's how they responded. I'm not saying that your doctor or anybody should treat you with this. I'm not saying I will treat you. I'm saying for this person and others over the last 20 plus years, I've used this very effectively to improve heart function. And we'll leave it at that because I don't need anybody crawling down my back and putting me before the medical board or the chiropractic board or any other boards. Just know that this is something you might want to talk about behind the privacy of closed doors with a functional expert, somebody like you, Corey, uh, a functional cardiologist, those are rare, uh, functional MD, those are becoming less and less rare so that you can have extra help. Don't believe that the best you can do is to take Lipitor to help decrease the acceleration of placking. The body responds incredibly well, often, not always, often to these incredible new protocols that are growing by the day with really brilliant functional doctors. Yeah, you know, I just, I, I'm blessed to have a, a cardiologist in my area who realized at some point that he was actually hurting people and decided to go holistic. Um, maybe I'll have, I'll ask him if he wants to be on, on here. He's a wonderful person and he's also that an would be a great active show. functionist. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That would be a fabulous show because so, it's, it's so hard, Corey, to know that people are dying left, right, and center when their protocols out like this that I've used on, you know, a number of people over 30 years, as you can imagine, and they've responded very, very, very well. Once again, I'm not saying everybody will. Right. I'm not saying it's a treatment for you. I'm saying that I've had a number of people respond very, very effectively to what I'm saying. And my father lived 10 and a half years once I got started on improving him functionally. And I want to say one more thing. I know you're getting ready to say something. The head nurse of a very esteemed hospital known nationally for its cardiac work. I had the, a number of their senior the cardiothoracic surgeons approach me in private and the head nurse of the cardiac ICU unit all pull me aside. And they said something that I've never forgotten. They said, Dr. Blomash. I said, yes. They said, so we want you to know, we know you're doing something with your dad and we're very impressed. I said, how do you know? And they said, because people don't live for nearly a month in the 
critical care unit of the cardiac ICU. They just don't. They die very soon. Either the bypass works, which your dad had, uh, and they get better in a matter of days, or they die. Your dad has been in here for over three weeks, and we know it's not about us. And they said, would it be possible for you to tell us what you're doing so we could learn from you? I said, I'm doing the following things. And a nurse overheard it. And he said, you should not be in here. You are not on staff. And if I catch you giving your father any of those things, I will have you immediately arrested and put up before the licensure board in this state. Do you understand me? Mm. Now, later, these high level coronary uh, surgeons said to me, I am deeply sorry. It's clear that you are highly competent. It is also clear to all of us that to a very great extent, you are why your father's still alive. And I was giving him a large array of things in liquid form, meaning ground up, pureed, so that he could take it. And he lived for 10 and a half more years when nothing logical made sense that he was going to live. We could only get one doctor that would do a bypass on him. Everybody said he's going to die. He'll, I don't want him to die. I don't want him to ruin my stats. He's going to die on my table and it'll ruin my stats. And one said, I'll take it on. But please know your dad is very, very close to death. He has almost 100% occlusion of every major coronary artery. It is not likely that he will live. I will take it on for you. He was one who spoke to me. And my kids got to know their grandfather because he lived for 10 and a half more years. That's, that's a really amazing story. Um, you know, I was, I had mentioned that my dad passed away of, um, he had a, a massive um, cardiac event uh, when he was 47. I was only 16 at the time. I was doing CPR on him, uh, which obviously was not successful. But, um, you know, and I didn't know, of course, any of the things I know now. Likely my father wouldn't have listened to me anyway, because he was that, just that kind of guy. His sure. His sure. motto, his motto was live fast, die young and leave a good looking corpse. And that's pretty much what he did. Well, so he got what he asked for. He lived the way he wanted to live. So um, I just have one last thought before we end. Um, just going back to cholesterol, I, I want to make the point also that avoiding eating cholesterol doesn't actually accomplish anything because your body makes it, your liver makes cholesterol. 80%. And if... Oh, well, so when I was younger, before I, I kn knew what I know now, I was practicing a vegan lifestyle for a long time. And I didn't eat any cholesterol because cholesterol is only found in animal foods. And my cholesterol was very high. And when I started to eat cholesterol again, when I started to eat animal foods again, it came down. So the avoidance of, of foods with cholesterol is not a solution. You just, you have to eat good, clean cholesterol sources. So in other words, grass-fed, pasture-raised. Not um, artificially raised because they're fed horrific things that stress them and produce artificially high levels of cholesterol. Right. And I have a lot of videos about that. I actually interviewed a pet food expert who talked about how commercial animals are raised and it was just awful. And I, I was crying in the middle of that video, but I've also hit on all these topics, protein. And then um, I have a video about raw milk with a raw milk expert where we also touched on that. So once again, uh, Nelson, I wanna thank you so much for uh, your very generous time and in, in informing us and enlightening us and educating us. And, um, you know, there, there's so much more to talk about. Maybe we'll have you on again Love uh, to. In, in the future. And uh, for everyone listening, please, if you found this video helpful, hit the like button so other people can find it. It helps with the algorithm and um, hit the subscribe button if you haven't done that yet, because it makes me happy to know that the word is getting out and more and more people are able to take control of their health. And most importantly, 
please share this video with anyone that you know that you think would benefit from it. And we will be seeing everybody again soon. Thank you so much for watching.